You might be a scatterbrained artist if you have lots of paintings in process. You might be a scatterbrained artist if you have lots of journals that are unfinished. You might be a scatterbrained artist if you have lots of projects that you have not completed. So scatterbrain might not be the word that you use to describe this chaotic, creative spirit that goes on in the studio. Lately, I've had a lot of friends, I've seen a lot of posts about how frustrating it is they have so many things unfinished and they feel like you know their studio is is like out of control and I wanted to talk about that today because I manage that in my studio and I wanted to share some of the things that I do to make me feel better about having a creative spirit first of all reading about other artists will really help you to understand your own creative spirit so you know, we, we're like uh, these creative channels, you know, we, we just pick up new ideas here and there. We're inspired by something completely different than what we create. And to outsiders, to people who don't do that, you know, we look unusual. So if you have read about Leonardo, then you know that Leonardo, he only finished like three paintings in his entire career and he lived to be an old, old man. Um, he was still painting the Mona Lisa when he died. He wasn't finished yet. <laughs> he kept going on it. And so that's what's so wonderful about it. Okay, I'm not a creative genius like Leonardo and neither are you, but you're your own kind of creative genius. And there are ways to make you feel more comfortable about it. Remembering that your creative spirit is so awesome and so important. It's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat every time you get a new idea and your artistic worth is imperative and the reason it's imperative is you have to you know stop uh, denigrating yourself feeling bad about things guilty about unfinished work it's imperative because your imagination will shut off you know that's how we get artist blocks that's one of the reasons anyway fear is the other one um, but if you if you have this great sense of self-worth then ideas will just keep coming to you and keep flowing and that's what you want you don't want it to stop you want to stay in the flow so reframe it instead of being a let's see my family's favorite uh favorite name calling thing for me was a uh, space cadet so uh, instead of being a space cadet or thinking i'm a space cadet when i can't remember things um, or thinking that my dad used to call me a bubble brain. That's a good one. Um, instead of thinking of myself that way, I think of myself as being innovative and creative and imaginative and original. Yes, those are all fabulous words. And that's what we have to do is to remind ourselves mentally, that's not true about me. The truth about me is I'm a creative genius. So reframing it mentally and reminding yourself every time you start hearing that word, whatever word it is that you use to describe yourself for being less than what you should be, um, you know, um, that, that's great and you're going to keep all of that in mind, but there are physical things that you can do as well. And one of the things I do is that I group all of my unfinished books together. That way I can just go to the shelf and I can see what I've got going on, how many things I have yet unfinished, and I can make a, a really good decision about whether I want to actually act on this idea and go make a brand new journal, or do I want to write it down in my, in my studio journal where I keep notes, is this the top or the bottom, where I keep notes of everything that goes on in my studio, all the things I'm creating, and I come up with you know, fabulous ideas that I just don't have time to create. And I star those in my journal and I'm looking for the star, star idea. Um, and then that way I've got it in here so that when I come to a period where I think, gee, what do I want to do? Do I want to finish one of my journals? Do I want to create something new? I have it all down here. The next thing you can do is to set a deadline for yourself. Now you don't have to submit to magazines like I do um, or to uh, shows or gallery exhibits and things like that. 
but you can set your own deadline. You can say that in two weeks, I want to have this project completed and then work toward that goal. Every day, get up, go do some work on that for that deadline. Okay, the other way that physically you can manage your projects, and as you can see, I have a lot of projects that are unfinished, is I put them in plastic, in Ziploc bags. Some of them are really big. Some of them are huge. They go into old sheet bags. Uh, I keep track of them this way. That way they go in the closet and then I remember, oh yeah, I've got this to work on. Oh yeah, I've got that to work on. I had this great idea. I started the sew project. I need to finish it. And it will really help you manage your creative spirit. Okay, creative geniuses, we're at Chow for now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this segment today. And next time we're going to be doing monoprinting techniques. I have a few tricks up my sleeve, so we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you then. But I wanna thank you so much again for all your comments, your questions, uh, for your subscriptions. We went over 2100 and we're so thankful and we enjoy doing this. So we hope you're tuning in to see us too. So, ciao, ciao.